Welcome ladies and gents to The Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 7 Review. Just as a quick aside, there are some severe weather conditions, so you might hear hailstorms, you might hear thunder going on, lightning. It's all going on outside in the UK right now. But anyway, this will be my review. We will talk spoilers. Uh, just overall, just going to be discussing the episode as a whole. As well as obviously my thoughts uh, on certain bits and pieces. So this was a longer than usual episode than we've had for quite some time. They've been really weirdly condensed. Bear in mind there's only 8 episodes per season. I feel like we've really wasted time. And I don't normally say that about shows. Because what ordinarily people consider to be filler, generally speaking, is character building or setting the stage for something greater. But... There's been a lot of filler this season, and it feels if you to if you were to try and marry it up with season one and season two, it feels completely different. You know, I mean, last week alone was just the most blatant example of filler I've seen yet for the Mandalorian. I mean, having Lizzo just randomly turn up in Jack Black, yeah, sure, like that certain elements of it were cool, and there were some callbacks to the prequels and things, but on a whole. It didn't service the main narrative, and it didn't build anything either. It was just the last two minutes that actually built on the narrative. So, yeah, this is we're seven episodes in, and because we've had too much filler, what I deem to be too much filler, we've now got to episode seven, and this felt very rushed, really rushed, and either rushed... Uh, because narratively speaking um, or rushed because of really weird choppy editing and I think it's a combination of the two there was some bizarre editing in this episode overall so what happened? well, we learn that uh, Moff Gideon has basically been presiding over Mandalore that's where he's built his base of operations cool, nice to have Moff Gideon back but breakneck speed to get there and the subtle clues that they could have had to build it out and make it a bit more interesting just weren't there in the previous episodes. Din Djarin leads, uh, along with Bo-Katan, brings the original Mandalorians back to Din Djarin's covert. And there's some tension, but it gets ironed out pretty quick. Now, I think what they were trying to do with that tension, because later in the episode, Paz Vizsla... I'm pretty certain it's Paz Vizsla, the guy with the massive buh, 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 machine gun, dies, right? And I think what they were trying to do was build out his character a little bit more and, you know, have him being this sort of reluctant hero and this sort of stony-faced man. And But it didn't land. Not for me. It didn't work. And yes, him sacrificing himself and saying, this is the way, there's too many, this is the way. At the end of the episode, when all of Moff Gideon's forces come down, yeah, like there was a little bit of emotion there behind it, but we could have had more. And this is what this season has been for me, is that it's lacking. It's really lacking. It could have been so much more. And that's just the, the main overall element of this whole season. It could have been so much more. And just like, just strange little elements. So, Bo-Katan... Din Djarin, the Mandalorians and the Covert, they all team up. They're all back together. And then they discuss, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to retake Mandalore. We're going to send down a search party to find the Great Forge. We're going to set up base camp. And then we're going to get everyone down. Uh, and we'll basically retake Mandalore. Cool. Sure. They get to Mandalore. There's like a pirate ship, but it's not a pirate ship. It's Mandalorians. Like, I mean, an actual, like, a land boat thing, complete with sails. Like a sail barge, it was odd, but the Mandalorian's on it. And anyway, they they sort of say how, well, you know, well, we weren't going to surrender, blah, blah, blah. And Bo-Katan's like, well, no, I did surrender, actually. And there's all these elements that you look at in, in isolation could have been really built up as something emotionally pranging just lacked it lacked massively and then they're on the sail barge and like i say 
trying to build up Paz Wiesler as this guy that's a bit of an arsehole, but not an arsehole. So he's facing off with that ax Axel, Axel guy. You know, the former leader of the, the Mandalorians. And then Grogu breaks him up. Oh, bearing in mind, two years ago, we had leaks about Grogu wearing IG-11's suit. The robot droid as a suit of armor. Yeah, that was true. I remember doing a video on it. And I was like, this sounds... I... Yeah, I don't know. Don't know what to think of it. Well, that was true. All the leaks surrounding these shows turn out to be true. Oh, Moff Gideon. Rocking like a... <laughs> like a Mandalorian suit of armor with a Mandalorian helmet. With like... Either horns or a crown in it. Yeah, that's true. That's what he did. But it doesn't... There's no weight there. And there was there was subtle hints of... Well, there wasn't subtle. They out and out stated, Thrawn's return. And Moff Gideon sort of scoffs at it. And we see Moff Gideon with his clones. There are clones around him. Now, I think what they're trying to do is build up the idea of the different factions working, you know, in the remnants of the Empire. Because there's comments from the Shadow Council of... Project Necromancer. And it's like, okay, well, who's that then? Who, what's Project Necromancer? Who, who is it? You know, is it Snoke? Is it Palpatine? How has Moff Gideon got clones as well then? Because we see him walking past the whole bunch of tanks of clones. Is he working for Palpatine? Is he trying to get his own power? What's going on? And there's these little questions that they don't they don't answer quite enough for you to go, oh, I want to know where that goes now. And they should. They should give us a little bit more. Because all it is, is it feels like this very disjointed, a bit of a mess, really. It's a bit disjointed. It's a bit of a mess. So, yeah. Can't say I massively liked the episode. Choppy editing choices... Bizarre comments by certain characters, Din Djarin. They play Grogu up as this sort of slapstick thing a bit too much now. So he's in this suit of armor on Navarro. And he's got two buttons, no and yes. And it is quite funny. But then they spend this sort of elongated time where he's in the market stealing fruit. And Din Djarin's like, oh, this isn't working for me. But yet he's still in the suit of armour. And then moving forwards, when they're on Mandalore, he's like, you better keep up, kid. And he just runs off. It's like, you wouldn't do that. The child is yours. Like, that's your thing to protect. Just strange choices. Something's in my eye, sorry. Very, very strange choices. You know? Like, when the Mandalorians get captured at the end, and Din Djarin is properly captured because they're separated by two blast doors why didn't Bo-Katan instantly get the dark saber out why did they ha why did they stand around and wait for Din Djarin to get caught and then Moff Gideon appear why just weird weird it's like well we've got to do this because we've got to get the character to do this so despite what they would do in real life in actuality, we're going to change that characterization quickly because reasons. And I don't like it when they do that. Stay true to the character. Because we know that bo can get the Darksaber out and can rip through a blast door because she does it about five minutes later. So why didn't you do that in the beginning? You didn't know Moff Gideon was there. You just knew you'd been ambushed. Get the fucking Darksaber out and rip through the blast door. But you didn't. And it's these dumb choices that you wouldn't have had so much of in season one and season two. And so I'm left just wondering, well, who's in control of this series now? Because I don't think it's John Favreau. I think it's Dave Filoni. <sighs> Disappointing. Good elements, not put together correctly. Disappointing. But if you've seen it, let me know what you thought down below. I'd love to hear any and all of your thoughts. Seems like the weather's calmed down a little bit. I mean, it's not. It's pissing down rain. But it didn't interrupt us. So let me know your thoughts down below. Love to hear it. Give the video a like and a share. Thank you so much. Take care.